So, 15 hours after this, it was back to Tokyo for this. For me, but not Wakataka Kage, who was still conducting his next day champions interview in Osaka. Only workmen were present at his stable, remodeling the practice area with the wrestlers away. There was, however, a celebratory message for the new champ. Just as there were celebratory orchids for Division 2 winner Ryuden. We'll be poring over the finale and entire title race in future posts. First, let me give you the view of the Yokozuna Council's new chairman, elected just this week. Although all three contenders lost on day 15, the playoff more than made up for that, Mr. Ko Mudai began. Wakataka Kage is already a highly complete wrestler, but has further room to grow, and you wonder just how far he can go. Mr. Komuda then spoke of Sumo's other key players, saying, Mitake Umi's Sumo is great, and his March score not bad at all. But given his amazing January and current expectations, we felt he came up a little short. As for Shodai and Takakesho, we're expecting more. They must go that extra mile. Having said that, though, Takakesho's headfirst charges are back, providing future hope. And if Shodai fights with the belief he showed in week two, the belief he can deliver when the going's tough, then there's still hope for him. I mean, even Hakuho feared his Tachiai. The now ex Hakuho has had a busy few days, starting with his Friday visit to his wife's birthplace of Tokushima, for whom he's a tourist ambassador. There did he donate an Osaka 2016 title winner's portrait, in which he wears an apron gifted by his Tokushima fans. I'm happy to be back here for the first time since retiring, Coach Magaki said. And it was great that in my final tournament, I could wear that Tokushima fan club apron and take the title undefeated. The portrait will be displayed in the Tokushima Industry and Tourism Exchange Center. Coach Magaki hopes that it attracts people from outside the prefecture and boosts local tourism. Then today, Sunday, April the 3rd, saw the first Hakuho Cup since 2020. This time held not at the Kokugikan, but at Ota Ward Gymnasium in Tokyo. Due to COVID restrictions, only parents were allowed in to spectate, I'm afraid. And my requests to cover it, while initially granted, then hit a brick wall. As for Hakuho himself, he said, It's my first Hakuho Cup as a coach, and thus full of memories. This is the twelfth time I've held this event, and I want to go for fifteen, then twenty. Sumo's active Yokozuna, meanwhile, performed a ring-entering ceremony at Ise Grand Shrine today, to which I took you during last year's Nagoya meet. Around a thousand spectators attended to watch a heavily taped Yokozuna clap and stamp. My legs are okay, said Terunofuji of his injured limbs, and his coach maintains that he resumed upper body work prior to the tournament end, and is now easing his lower limbs back into the routine. In other news, Coach Hakkaku has been re-elected sumo chairman again, and has vowed to realize what he calls just and equitable association management. He was reappointed by the new board, which includes new members, Coach Isenoumi and Coach Sadogatake, and a returning Coach Michinoku after an 11-year break. Dozens of association posts have now been reassigned. Coach Nishonoseki moves to the judging division, while Coach Magaki moves to PR. Finally, 
This year's Nagoya tournament will run at 100% capacity, the first to do so post-pandemic. It has been announced. And Sumo Summer Tour events are to resume just after that, with the aid of a new virus prevention manual. The tour usually takes in Hokkaido and the Northeast at that time, however, this year's venues are yet to be confirmed. There's lots more news to give you, of course, but let me spread it out to allow for greater focus on individual topics. Our new salaried wrestlers, retirees, and fresh recruits will all be featured in upcoming posts. <laughs>